So the season of Worthy gameplay slash story trailer has launched. We've got a lot of stuff to break out down in there. We've got shots of new exotics. We've got a tease of what is happening with the story. Of course, a little bit about trials is in there as well, but we've got a lot of little nuggets that we can pull out from this thing. So let's jump into it frame by frame, piece by piece. Here we go. So first thing that is out is a new gameplay trailer, so I'm going to let that play for you guys. Then I'm going to go through and slow it down, stop in a couple parts so you guys can see a few pieces that are going to be probably worth looking at. Anna, are you there? All have taken out the primary engine. It's like they want this thing to drift off into space forever. Not forever. Guardian, the Almighty is plummeting me towards the last city, and we have no way to stop it. If it comes to it, we Guardians must be the ones to make a hard choice. All right, so first, let's start with what seems to generally be the story for this season. We've got a Scion from the Cabal who was able to either escape the Sundial, get out of there, and what it was able to do is get aboard the Almighty, which was the big floating ship outside Mercury that's been chilling there, pretty much doing nothing since the Red War campaign. What it basically seems to be stated is that somehow the Scion has turned and probably aimed the Almighty at the last city on Earth, pretty much so it's right next to the tower that you can look down and see, started it in that direction and then completely disabled the controls, the engines. So it is floating through space like a very slow meteor that has no reason to stop. And it's large, obviously, if it's able to suck up the power of the sun. So you have a giant, giant ship floating towards the last city that would absolutely crush it if it actually got there. So... Uh, it states that we do have to make the tough decision. Now, the tough decision is maybe one where activating the War Mind is something Zavala potentially doesn't want to do because in the War Mind campaign, he was not a fan. Uh, if you guys hear any background noise, I apologize. There's only so much I can do about that. But uh, during the War Mind campaign, Zavala didn't want us to be in there in the first place, didn't want us to activate War Mind, really talk to it or deal with it at all. He feels like it abandoned us. Uh, Osiris obviously has some issues from the teaser that we've also seen. So there are definitely some people who don't feel like the Rasputin is the one that we should be working with, but he also is likely the only thing that is even capable of facing off with something this large and destroying it. Main reason is because from previous lore discussions that happened when I was wondering why Osiris was so mad, theory at least seems to be that Osir that um, Rasputin at least was capable of either disabling the Traveler and keeping him keeping the Traveler in the solar system. And as powerful as the Traveler is, if Rasputin can even go toe-to-toe -to -toe with that thing, it's got some type of arsenal or weapon system or something that is going to be capable of at least dealing with the almighty ship that is aimed at Earth and headed there. So... The general idea seems to be that we're going to be going around to different towers and, or going around to different areas on different planets. So you'll be working in actually more of the patrol zones, it looks like, because there's going to be specific public events called Seraph Towers. We're probably going to be using those to either charge up the arsenal or charge up the weapon that uh, Rasputin has on, you know, different planets. There are different bunkers we're going to have to go down in. 
possibly proving our worthiness, hence Season of the Worthy, being a very obvious thing for Trials, being worthy, going to the lighthouse. That's very fitting, but it also seems like we actually have to prove to Rasputin through some challenges that we're actually going to be worthy in and of itself to, you know, actually work with us. Is Rasputin going to pair with us and listen to us and help us out? Rasputin mainly works for the survival of humanity. That's all it cares about. Guardians are not really humans anymore. We've died. We've come back multiple times. Countless, depending on what you've been working on. Um... But Rasputin at this point may need some type of interaction, some challenges, some enemies cleared out. We have to face something potentially to show him that we're worthy. And then turn around, hopefully Rasputin, by charging the towers, completing the challenges, doing everything that we need to do, is able to actually stop the almighty ship coming in. Which seems like kind of a cool story in theory. But when we move away from the story, we've got some other cool stuff in this trailer, quite a bit to look at and break down, be it uh, there's story bits, there's little screenshots that we're going to go through. So I'm going to go and kind of pull up screenshots that I know are cool to look at. And we're going to kind of talk about each one, pointing out specific either weapons or moves or just anything you guys might find interesting. So let's get into the screenshot section and see what we find. So the first screenshot, I think, has to be this little mech warrior guy. Um, some type of mechanized war mind suit. Now it hunkers. Now it stands on all fours for a second because there's a couple different screenshots of this thing. And when you look at it, it looks really crazy, like it's a standing kind of mech. It's got two legs, it's got some pretty big giant arms focused on a smaller torso and a head. And then you can actually see it hunker down and fire what looks to be kind of the javelin, the basically the spear that we're able to throw that's charged. And it looks like it's firing that. I really hope we don't have to face this thing as a challenge because it looks pretty beefy. Hopefully, maybe it's on our side. Maybe this is kind of the war mind weapon that, you know, gets to work with us. But if not, this thing could be a bit of a struggle for a boss in any segment of whatever we're going to be facing here. So that will be an interesting thing to face for sure. And that was a big glaring like, what is this giant mech thing covered in war mind pieces? No idea. Hopefully that tends to be something cool. So as we kind of go progressively through the trailer, we're going to see another screenshot here where it looks like we've got a couple new finishing moves. One of them looks like a gladiator finishing move from the Cabal. So you've got the two big giant cleavers uh, in that kind of solar aesthetic. And this warlock is just basically going to go to town swinging them. And that's how the finish is going to happen on this acolyte up front. Behind it, we've got a separate one. Now this one looks like you're literally just giving the enemy the boot. We've got a couple kicks. Maybe this one just has a weird effect on it somehow. But as you guys can see right here, this like Vex, it looks like the Garden of Salvation, looks like Season of Undying, looks like it has a very cool effect to it. I don't know if it's just like a weird skin on the kick, if the boot kick is actually new, not entirely sure, but a very cool finishing move nonetheless. So the first exotic we have here is Tommy's matchbook. This is going to be an exotic auto rifle, or at least I have to assume it's an auto rifle because it's Tommy gun. I don't know what other classification you'd put it as. Pretty sure it's going to be an auto rifle. We've got a little bit of gameplay that'll kind of slow down so you guys can see it here. I think it might be a solar auto rifle. Not sure, but just guessing there. Still looks pretty cool. We've got a couple screenshots. I'll kind of go through so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Just kind of the look of the gun itself. So overall, pretty cool that we just have an auto rifle, specifically a Tommy gun, coming in for this season. Second one that we've got is going to be what looks to be a pretty damn big minigun. Um, picture Doom, perhaps. So you've got... A large barrel on the end of, obviously, a belt-fed machine gun. It does look like it has a round barrel that has the option to rotate the way it is, it is attached. And, honestly, this could be freaking awesome. Um, now, we have a minigun in the game right now in Sweet Business. The way this thing looks right now, it is much beefier than Sweet Business. So, I have to assume it is a heavy, because most of the heavy machine guns do have the belt-fed look to it right here on the you know, loading side. But it also does look like it's going to be a minigun. A heavy minigun has potential to do either a ton of damage if they don't nerf it into the ground. I don't know. This thing's got potential to be a beast. Now, if it's a heavy auto rifle, I'm actually going to kind of laugh. Because it technically is going to work kind of like an auto rifle. But it's going to probably sit in the heavy slot. So, auto rifles could be very interesting. But either way, a heavy machine... A heavy mini machine gun or heavy machine gun minigun style i don't know how you want to call it that still looks very cool 
The third weapon is going to be Fourth Horseman. Two reasons. One, the end of the barrel is very obviously Fourth Horseman. It was a Destiny 1, full auto shotgun, five shots, pumps them out really fast, and it was like the shortest range in the world. It was so short, but it pumped out the damage so quickly. So basically, you'd have five shots like, two, 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 and you'd be done. Your clip would be empty, but you just unloaded a crap ton of damage in a very short period of time. Now, they're probably able to bring this one back considering the auto... the Auto reloading is gone, so that's not going to completely break the game with just a crap load of damage, and things seem to be in a reasonable place. Shotguns, range, cone, and stuff like that. This thing is probably not going to have very much range. Don't plan on it being like a PvP god or anything. This was definitely for PvE situations. Up close and personal, and you just want to melt an enemy, that's what it's going to do. The other, other reason we know it is definitely going to be the fourth horseman is you can actually see the ornate nature kind of on the back stock part of the gun. You can see the scope has a very unique look to it. It's got the wooden underbarrel for the grip. All of those pieces lead to this being fourth horseman, an arc, um, energy shotgun, full auto, probably five shots. I don't know exactly how the perks are going to work, but it was probably going to be something along these lines. So those are the three confirmed exotic weapons coming this season. As for armor, haven't seen really anything, so that's really what we've got for exotics. Now here, I might loop this gameplay over and over so you guys can see it a little bit, but you've got what looks to be a pretty large Warmind looking tower. We'll do a couple screenshots as we go through. Uh, but you've got a couple Warmind spires here. You've got uh, an, a character running around with an orb. And then you've also got a couple screenshots where they're actually throwing the orb into the kind of almost like Sauron eye from Lord of the Rings that is sitting between the two towers. Now, this may be us doing one of the public events to charge up the Staref Towers, and these may be all over on every planet. So I don't know if it's going to rotate between planets on a certain week or, hey, spend the first week on EDZ, another week on Titan, another week on Nessus, and we're working on charging up each planet. Excuse me, up each planet. But on the other side... Um, definitely a different public event feel. This is on the moon, so we're back to the moon in a different feeling public event. So still getting some good use out of that one, this one, because even I was thinking I missed the Vex public events the other day. So we will see how frequent the rotation is, if they're just permanent for a certain amount of time. Not entirely sure how they're going to work, but these do seem to be related to the Seraph Towers public events where you're kind of throwing orbs, Black Armory style in the forges, into that middle charging point between the two spires of this public event or Seraph Tower. Now, a very obvious thing that we knew as it got dropped last week is Trials of Osiris is coming. We get a couple shots of weapons. You've got the shotgun here, so you can actually see him loading the shotgun slug into the chamber here. It's got the glowing Trials icon on the side, so very much a Trials weapon. Uh, it looks like we've got a Trials sniper rifle or potentially an ornament on one. Also, a couple other weapons. Some people are thinking Doctrine of Passing. It was a, very, it was a 900 RPM auto rifle. Very, very popular because people could melt with that one. So we will see, but you've definitely got the ornament. We're sitting here on the cauldron map with this shot. And then we've got a couple other shots for trials. So I'm just going to go through and show you guys a couple screenshots. You've got Anomaly, another one of the maps, Exodus Blue, a quick shot of it. And then also cauldron again, kind of on the interior section. And just a nice finish with the throwing knife. And of course, can't help an emote with the little glasses sitting on here. Just kind of chilling out, being awesome. Um, that one's probably just like cruising, just kind of chilling. Nice little emote there. Now, this is where we do see, it looks like, again, taking these little screenshots piece by piece, it looks like here we are on the moon by the aesthetic of the background, the gray ground, so it does definitely appear to be the moon, but it also looks like we've got the javelin from Warmind itself, um, so we've got the javelin from Mars in the story where you actually get the giant energy weapon charge, you throw it, hits for a ton of damage, very cool weapon, on the moon, so this may be related to those Seraph Towers public events, definitely something here. And what we get here is a final shot of a new champion. The champions have those kind of energy double arcs around their shoulders typically, and this is 100% a captain. So we've got a captain champion this time, um, potentially one that we haven't seen before. Not entirely sure if this is going to be barrier, overload, or unstoppable. I could probably see barrier or overload, but I honestly don't know depending on if it's far away it could just be barrier and try and kill you from range we're not entirely sure but definitely a new champion fallen related so we will definitely be fighting fallen for part of this for sure and then finally you just get a very cool shot of the season pass these look to be the ornaments that we're looking at here uh these are going to be probably the ones that you get from the actual paid season pass toward the end these are going to be the ornaments for your armor and these seem to be like the Seraph set, if that makes sense. Uh, seven Seraphs, it's the armor set. 
that we're going to be able to earn and the ornaments that we're going to get on top. So kind of very cool looking, very ornate helms on all three of them. Kind of the visor that you would look through has a cool ornamental look to it. You've got the green kind of net look in a couple different places and also kind of the white or light gray undertones to it. Very cool looking set of armor. Honestly, kind of digging this one. Honestly, the Bungie artists always crush. This time the Titan even has some crazy shoulder pads. I'm going to pull up another screenshot now so you guys can see that. Uh, because the armor here is, again, kind of crazy. This screenshot also has a couple very specific shots. So you guys can see, again, the weapons again. So you've got the Tommy's matchbook in the middle. Fourth Horseman is on the right. If you didn't think it was, it's really, really obvious that that's Fourth Horseman. Four barrels stuck together. Uh, you've got the Fourth Horseman. It's from Tex Mechanico. So you've got the ornate nature, just like the chaperone and everything else. And again, that scope is really, really specific. Just with that kind of larger iron sight that you look through. And I'm guessing on the left-hand side, that might be like just, you know, they have last word in there for whatever reason, even though it's getting getting a bit of a nerf. But that's a nice shot of that armor so you guys can see that as well, just since it carries over from the trailer. And that pretty much wraps up the Season of the Worthy trailer. So we've got quite a bit to look forward to. We've got new exotics. We've got a new PvE activity. And there's more that actually just recently came up as I was done recording this video on the Season of the Worthy Bungie website. So I'm going to do a breakdown of that probably tomorrow so you guys can check in for that one. But the one that I'm actually going to work on putting up a little later today is your prep in this final week of things that you can do to get as ready as possible for uh, Season of the Worthy. Launches next week. We have a week. So that's between bounties and pinnacles and things of that nature. Just trying to give you guys some stuff to work on. Or if you want to take this week off before you go hard into Season, season of the Worthy, that is fine as well. If you did enjoy the video, drop a like below, leave a comment if you got questions, thoughts, opinions, just over everything that you guys have all seen here. You guys can follow me on Twitch and Twitter. Of course, that's a good place to catch me either posting about this, streaming games, this visit usually, but there are other games as well. And if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel yet, please do so. That is a nice way to help support my, my me on this journey as well. So thank you all very much. Hopefully you enjoyed this breakdown. I'll do a breakdown of the website uh, probably tomorrow or Thursday. And then, of course, I'll be working on the prep video for you guys this afternoon. Maybe this evening it'll go up. So stay tuned for that one. Sub so you don't miss it. And I'll see you all very, very soon.